What is up, Avoir Me? This is a war show. Not the essay that we would towards in the monthly hundred entry book and series. Is entitled Catch Me If You Can to the Palestinian State. Episode 19. Episode 19. I distinctly remember this writing both paragraph 1 and 2. I remember reading about the Palestinian artificial state force diaspora from the Israelis. I think it's from Johnny Harris. I think I'm not really sure if it's Johnny Harris or whatever. But I remember getting so pissed off considering the Zionist regime should have been accepting of the peaceful Palestinians living cohabitably with the Israeli Jews back then. I remember James renaming our nicknames in our GZ with the first name being Zion. So if my name is, you know, Joseph, then it would be Zion Joseph. Or not really Zion Joseph, I think. I'm not really sure, but I think it's Zion Joseph. I'm not really sure. But we are councilmen. At, at least that's what we call ourselves. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't really know what the hell is going on in there also. I mean more power to you for eliminating Hamas and I know that your existential security is at risk if wars between your neighbors aren't resolved but for real dude, like you of all people should know what it feels like to be forcefully evicted and yet here you are being forcefully evicting others. You've been forcefully evicted, forcefully diasporaed from encroaching regions and empires and now you're here with your United States Empire backing you, kind of giving back what you had experienced, which is kind of weird because that's revenge, right? Or this kind of a revenge with the most powerful economic, political, military, with two religions supporting powerful state against the stateless people with a moderate backing from regional powers and home court vantage. Now, is that fair? The thing that bursts the them versus them attitude is their motive, control. Typical religious zealots murdering and arguing for the same god with a kind of different doctrine. Although, seemingly minor details if you ask me, but you know, because that's just how territorial and tribalistic humans are. Kind of accepted that to be honest, because religion is religion in and of itself, and it's a testament and self-evident to say the least. But what the hell do I know about this anyway? I am but a 16 year old at the time writing this with a lot of opinions and this one being kind of my most fervently against thing I was supposed to be around that point of time but you know, you get older, you get older. I tend to side with the oppressed rhetorically and so sided with the status quo of the Palestinians having a state, the Israelis having a state and a neutral zone for the religious groups convening in Jerusalem and probably part of the country because there is already a kind of lost cause to be honest right now because you know almost all major religions are at the very least Abrahamic religions are the ones convening and those Abrahamic religions are the most powerful at least contemporarily if the Jews are the ones being expelled I'll probably come to their respective defense. However, since the underdog now is the Palestinians and me generally disliking the evangelical Americans, I have tended to side with the Palestinians at least just for now. I'm not in a mood for this. They're currently the diaspora unfolding. Their sides are both murderous religious zealots and anytime multiple factions of religions trying to kill each other, well, I won't mind. And it's pretty clear that I don't really care about this topic anyway. I just don't like those evangelical right Christian Americans. They're just so freaking weird. The title is also a play on the play Catch Me If You Can and some other random crap I wouldn't get into at least just yet. Anyway, subscribe to my socials, follow my links and socials and <laughs> oh, what I'm talking about. Subscribe to my channel, follow my links and socials and avoid Joseph that would be linked down below. Um I don't know what to do now, but I don't I don't want to make this video, but I already missed the schedule, so I'll probably do the Monday to f Monday and then Sunday. I think that would be good. Wait, probably not. Anyway, I'll probably do this whenever I can.
Without further ado, let's get to the do. First paragraph, first first paragraph. Catch me if you can to the Palestinian state. First paragraph, first first paragraph. There was a book in the Bible that predicts the coming of Jesus. Or at least that's what the evangelical Americans wanted to believe. I think the comeback of the not-so-much-beloved Christ of his time was supposed to come a millennia or so ago. Some even said during the lifetimes of the prophet. Utter BS! Or the second coming of Christ. It is funny how religions try to get around clearly stated meant to be obviously literal facts when said predictions did not align with what was boldly proclaimed. People ought to look in on that. Now, I do not like religious persecution, but still, if you're in support of the conquering of Jews to the Palestinian lands, which is rightfully theirs considering they've been living there peacefully coincidingly with the Israeli Jews, then we'll clash. They are Israelis themselves. They just don't practice Judaism. Palestinians are there. They are the Jews. Or at least... The OJs. The problem became when the entire Middle East became almost unanimously Muslim and they're brown, unlike the white European Jews escaping the Nazi regime in Germany. I am not here to ridicule the fact that, of all people, their diaspora should be a telltale sign that religious persecution and eviction is not the way to move forward as a nation. But I guess. It hasn't been 100 years and they're still forgetting that. I'm not here to defend the Islam faith or the Muslim faith or whatever you want to call it, nor any faith for that matter. I do not concern myself to defend only one specific faith. Rather, the concept of faith, as I for one still believe that religious freedom is a must, however much I want to tell you that you're maybe wrong. Don't hold that against me. I am not the defender of the Islam, Jewish, Buddhist, Sikh, Christian, Hindu, Shinto, Zoroaster faith. I am not the defender of the faith, rather the defender of faiths. There's a difference. No one is quite clearly the good guy here, but I tend to side with the seemingly oppressed. I again have no chips in here whatsoever. I should not even care. They're both hostile religions, or at least the state that sponsors them. They're hostile at each other. They say that if the Jews were to claim the land of Zion, it would be a starting point for Jesus' next coming. Although the now -er something something. He would just get this over with. So this is the summary of their thinking, whether consciously or subconsciously. Since they fail to grasp the fact that the Palestinians are Israelis themselves, or the original Israelis, or OIs, slash OJs, if you're thinking original Jews, who are Islamized by the Caliphs, and are only evicted not because they believe that it's the white Jews who practice said religion, that being Judaism that deserves the land rather because they're white themselves. They are European Jews. As the book said according to them, if the Jews were to come back to their holy site, then it will trigger the second coming of Christ. Palestinians are Jews slash Israelis themselves. They barely left. That's still their holy site. That's still their state and that's still their country. It's it's just that, you know, they aren't considered original Jews because Jesus is white and so are Jews and so are European Jews. Jesus is white because of the transfiguration, right? And Palestinians are brown. The thing does not connect with their brains nor would they allow centuries if not thousands of years of conditioning about their supposed superiority. They won't allow the Palestinians to live there not because they ain't one of them, either white and Christian or follower of the Jewish faith. How? Even Jews living in the U.S. is an entirely fan of the evictions and the Zionist regime, Netanyahu, especially the ultra-Orthodox Jews who believe that forcefully creating a state for Israelites after the diaspora commanded in his omnipotence and omniscience grace is considered going against the God's will. They're waiting for the Messiah before establishing a state. I just learned that in a Vice documentary around three hours ago about calm ultra extremist orthodox or nature carta jews or natural carta or i don't know nature carta jews you probably see my comment there and i literally opened this laptop 
just to add this in so you know that's kind of a new thing for me to see and i know i will look like someone looking for some people that validate my claim without thinking much about it but just because it works in my favor but as i said i don't care I'm just giving a view not widely known and it works in my favor. That's my bias. We should not consult a book that is 10,000 years old about anything more than its reasonable grasp in knowledge. According to the book itself, that has no knowledge of microorganisms and blame sickness on the devil. For God is not a real estate agent paid via worship and blood, or at least not what he's supposed to be. Why do we really believe this? I'm not singling out the Torah and Tana, also the modern medieval Christian Bible, but also the Quran and whatever. Why? Isn't hundreds or even thousands of years of progress not enough to discredit these with their failed predictions. Why, oh, why? It baffles. And the worst part is that, albeit I agree that it does give some comfort for people's fifis though, as Ben said, facts don't care about your feelings. But I do, and I still don't care about that thing. The only thing accurately predicted was war, famine, and everything, which is not what something you could see in a god that is both omniscient, omnipotent, and omnibenevolent. Why are they still barbaric? At least if we're going to read the book who supposedly has the moral ascendancy, then maybe they should have been still doing the stoning or slavery or every other stuff that is not particularly liked in the Bible, Torah, Tanakh, and Quran. Hell, if you really think about it, the pork eating and stuff isn't really founded on a good belief that Jesus actually said it because Jesus did not say it nor has he been documented eating it. He just said it in one apostle's dream. And do you really think that's kind of true? Maybe it's the devil that has been doing this to trick us into being in hell. F what Jesus said. Y'all don't love your neighbors still anyway. Maybe the South neighbors. The moral ascendancy of the Bible is raping women and killing their men. If that's the highest standard that this supposed omniscient, omnibenevolent, omnipotent God gave you, then there's a lot of stuff that we could get away with. So why are there still laws if the ultimate punishment is there already? If you really do believe in it, at least practice what you preach. Jeez. Or is it love thy neighbor unless they're different color and faith as you because that I could understand the logic. If they wanted peace, they would end the war and live with what the colonial people gave to the Palestinian state. Y'all had more than enough. Again, that's a proposed thinking. I don't even care anymore. It's just that Israel is the oppressor as we speak. And the Palestinians are the ones being oppressed. Just do it out, dude. The only reason I oppose this is because the, those Christian evangelical Americans fund them fueled by their white supremacist subconscious slash conscious thinking and if i weigh in the options i think i'd rather go with the brown ones where i actually think are oppressed there should be no blood to be shed for if what jesus want is peace why would he approve of this bloody and costly war against their neighbor not to mention their own race because they don't look alike they are both technically brothers but then again, not what he conventionally think of them now. The America Jesus, aka the real one, thinks of war as a necessity to covet thy neighbor's goods, to enslave people, and overall not have a hippie mentality. You know, the real one. Jesus said to love thy neighbor, but these evangelical Christians agree of the bombings in Iran that support the Palestinian state. Then again, they both want to eliminate each other. So. I guess leave it to the people who live peacefully with less prejudice alone. Yeah, just whatever dude, I don't want to concern myself with a bloody war. But in my opinion that could change said outcome doesn't eliminate said outcome, rather reverse it. Because if the Palestinians did gain the superiority around that point, then they would probably do the same with the Israelites. So I don't really need to care anymore. Just live peacefully and coincide with one another. We also have to understand that Israel is doing this as a defense mechanism and so just duke it out. It's a kill or be killed mentality 
world they live in, surrounded by probably hostile foreign power with a subsection of the population that outright distaste them and see them as an enemy. We were on the brink of another world war initiated by the death of a prominent leader in Iran by bombing approved by the White House. I remember sharing memes about the start of the World War III on my phone at 2am as I'm flirting around January of 2020 about nuclear Armageddon in our backyard. But you know, that's the memes we've got and what are we to do anyway? Sign a petition? Like that works? The funny thing was the fact that according to the people at the White House, they only put the option of a drone strike as but an SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Because you know, they like to give every possible options they could give to the president because you know that would be negligible not to give the president every possible last ditch efforts that they or the president could use and that thing was to bomb and kill the crap out of Qasem Soleimani no one thought he'd kill the crap out of Qasem Soleimani I think that's the guy I remember posting on my Facebook wall about whether Qasem Soleimani would be the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of World War III and I got a few laughs and a few and by a few I mean like three people maybe two maybe even one only I don't know if you are a true Christian or just overall a reasonable and decent human being you would know that the war should not be our foreign policy for it will bring the downfall of our civilization as my guy gandhi said an eye for an eye only makes the world blind although the west however barbaric they portray killing evicting genociding and murdering is is in fact they also are built by killing evicting genociding and murdering plundering so they can't really preach that their civilization is indeed a civil one if they still do said acts not until they've made their reparations and acknowledgement of the past, current, and future atrocities. Because that's definitely going to happen too. Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which suggestions or warnings about events to come are dropped or planted. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Even with the rise of the Eastern Orient, they cried religious persecution, but they do not realize that they're using their religion to annihilate a society and group of people living there for thousands of years. How many wars do we have to fight to achieve peace? Yeah, I don't know why they said they are persecuted when I heard that in our church. I was like, excuse me? Aren't we the ones that did the oppression? The sad situation for us is that we, Catholics and Christians of non-white descent is oppressed. So by that you could say that Christians and Catholics are oppressed. But they oppressed us into being Christians and Catholics. We didn't start off this way. Forced more like. Such oxymoron, it's moronic. No one can achieve peace without reconciliation for reconciliation is the stepping stone for peaceful deliberation. Resistance is futile, so better die for futility. Must I give a directive that to achieve a stable status quo, a war must commence? Is peacefulness really only achievable after a war? When the winning powers consolidate, to achieve a stable status quo, we must tear each other up to pieces? Damn, are we really this fucked up if we think that's the only way to move forward? It's kind of crazy, dude. Second paragraph. Second paragraph. I have watched Catch Me If You Can earlier this week, a film directed by Steven Spielberg. He was one of the most esteemed directors of all time with Jaws. I think that was a humor attempt. I'm not really sure. I just vividly remember this because I remember a kuya of mine lost his bike while I'm making this. Am I talking about the big short? I'm not even sure. Now, I have watched the first 30 minutes of Frank Abagnale's speech on the channel talks at google now it is fascinating to see a man i idolized in just a tiny amount of time to finally see him in the flesh because when i watch the film i don't know man it's just that it's so surreal to see someone mythologized in the flesh turning out to be just like the rest of us maybe even underwhelmingly give or take 50 years it's weird 
not to mention that I painted a very different image of what Frank Abagnale is because you know it's portrayed by Leonardo DiCaprio not to be confused with Leonardo da Vinci da Vinci who painted the Mona Lisa oh, Mona Lisa oh, yeah yeah Da Vinci? That was a meme, and an E-tier meme in my opinion, out of F. Which is said if we were to confuse a phenomenal artista to the guy in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now kidding aside, as I was mesmerized and astonished by his sheer stupidity and his dedication to his crafts into avoiding close calls. I sure I could have pulled that if I had the confidence and desperation. Well, not really. I'm sure so... Maybe my confidence couldn't with my baby face, or at least adolescent face. How can an adolescent guy fool a company? How does a guy pass the board exam in Louisiana? I'm, I'm not sure. In just two weeks. He really is a man of dedication. He does not like to call himself a genius, for he said he was just a teenager trying to not starve in the street. He is a man of focus commitment and sheer fucking will the guy is a living legend and a cautionary tale i don't even know why i watched the google talk he did but i think that was the first one i watched or is it christopher hitchens talk not really sure the desperation sure is strong on this one it should be evident that he could have done many things instead of going through the lengths to succeed in life and as i have understood or he knew had in his speech he thinks about that for every day of his life. But I guess the glamour is indeed shimmering and if I had a chance and the life is disposable or relatively inconsequential, then I would. No, at least he had found his job. The ones that cut down on those aspiring to fool the system and acquire amounts of cash just like what he did when he was a young boy. Although kind of snitch behavior dude on cool. He admitted that he should not be idolized for his criminals and malicious acts for he was just a kid back then. Although he looks very old around that point if I'm being completely honest maybe that's why. Agree. It's desperation that drove him there and wouldn't want to experience such desperation. I know I wouldn't. I don't have the advantages he had with his disadvantages. At least he had those advantages. He did everything not to work but, but ended up working not to be caught not working. What the fuck? Whatever. I guess that's clever. He worked so hard to avoid doing hard conventional work but ended up working hard unconventionally to avoid being caught by those that the work hard in conventional jobs and to avoid working hard in a cell after being caught working hard not to work hard. He was forced to work hard with the conventional workers using the skills he honed during the time he worked hard to avoid doing hard conventional work against those trying to avoid conventional work working hard by working hard unconventionally as he was back then. Try saying that a million times at three times speed. Third paragraph. Third, third paragraph. The third day had again rounded by the vice president. He said she apparently lied and wanted to usurp the role away from him. I told y'all I supported her efforts before, just like the Palestinian issue. I didn't have an opinion on it just because it became popular. So don't you dare tell me that I only ride the high of the crowd when choosing sides. I know this gives off the I'm not like other opinionated slash woke guys meme, but I just want to tell y'all that I'm different. Now this sounds like someone just got super angry because his VP was doing work while he still contemplates and argues whether he should swim in the floods for their stranded fellow countrymen. That was a reference to the gag slash joke he made. He has the funds. His office alone is worth billions. If you don't want to be outshone, do more than what you're doing right now. Get our trust back. I said in a tweet, kung ayo masapawan, Galingan ang trabaho, or if you don't want to be outshone, do better on your job. We might be better off with her on the position taking over your role and probably do a better job than you crying in a corner complaining just to assert my dominance. The VP was focused on actually helping in outreaches. Sure, maybe she's doing it for a show, but, but why aren't you also doing it? You don't even need to be present. I know that the press has got a lot to do, especially the 
during the time of crisis, but don't disparage her just because you fear of losing the popularity you enjoyed all throughout the presidency. At least she's doing something, even if she's but a spear. Whatever show she wants to portray, at least she's doing something with little funds and she was also applauded by the Senate themselves that, that voted to increase her budget. You know why that multi-partisan boost in budget is actually crucial. She's a uniting force in the Senate because of what she has done for so little. Fourth paragraph, fourth, fourth paragraph. Woo. I don't know dude, it's just about how the minor subject teachers aren't given priority because they're general education and they compensate such with the forcing their students and it is kind of funny. That's the end of Catch Me to the Palestinian States if you can from November 18, 2020 with the tags politics slash RGB because you know it's fun to do that. And yes, I was supposed to upload this video on Thursday, at least my time Thursday, but you know, there's a lot of stuff I have always wanted to get away with. And even now, I don't want to create this video. That's why I don't really have a lot of elaborate trickeries and any advancements that could be constituted me doing actual work because I'm just so freaking tired lazy and not quite in the mood to do any video and i figured i'll do this lackluster video for you just to kind of spread the message out there but i'm not going to have what i did last episode because i'm kind of lazy monday i was tired i think yeah tuesday i was making the script for this video and also shooting a video for tuesday Wednesday, I was also making a script and I had my friend's birthday, which was a surprise and I loved surprising my friends on their birthday. It's his 18th birthday and so I figured when in Rome, right? I actually wanted to create a video or at least an intro for that, but I guess that won't actually work. Maybe if I'm in like outside then I would probably make a an intro for each video differently. You know, I could do card fields while I'm on the video. Not really sure what to do now. And so I just kind of do it because why not, right? Yeah, I'm just being I'm just tired and all that stuff and I can't really do the gay I can't really do the video at morning slash afternoon slash even evening because there's a construction near our house like literally in front of our house and those constructions they play copyrighted music and drilling and hammering and stuff like that and even now the only reason i actually made this video today even though i don't really have the energy nor the care is because there's little to no rain which is absolutely good i was supposed to make a video on friday or at least thursday this is friday okay so today is friday yesterday i was supposed to make a video even on wednesday even though i was tired i wanted to make this video just so that i could just so that i could edit the video while i'm resting on thursday and then i'll upload it but it didn't go as planned because i was tired and I have expended a lot of money so there's that but it is a good experience nonetheless we I stay we stayed there for like I don't know eight hours because what yeah around that around, around that ballpark it, it's actually a good thing that the dog the big large dog we call Abrina downstairs isn't barking to the cats because the cats isn't really meowing as much as you can hear in this silence okay. I, I, I was wishing for them to meow because that would be funny but doesn't really matter nonetheless I'm also wearing black not only because you know although it is a nice coincidence I also wear black because hashtag we bear black hashtag ml never forget we should never forget martial law ever happened because 
that is a piece of history that is in danger of being lost because the the son of the dictator was elected president. What would the future Filipinos would think about them now? Or at least about them then? Because if we elected them 50, less than 50 years after the martial law, then why did we do that? Why did we elect the son of a former dictator as president with no discernible qualities, with no platform, with no nothing except the word unit? It's kind of weird, I know, that I'm again ranting about Marcus Jr. but there's a lot of turmoil today in the Philippines as a whole. I know this would be a lackluster video but I just want this to be done and then I could edit it because the busy future of mine is incoming and so I will regularly miss upload schedules I think because I'm in college now and I have to prioritize it unfortunately I have to prioritize my studies first before all of this and I know to be fair it would be seven years before I actually uh, completed this series maybe even more if you ask me but it is what it is maybe even 14 years maybe 13 12 11 10 years maybe 10 years but i'm just tired okay i haven't i haven't been doing well so there's that and as you can see i'm i'm like sleeping already at this point i just want this to end i, I keep on rambling okay I, I have a lot of stuff to say but i don't want to because i don't have the energy i am kind of miserable right now I don't, although I don't know why I'm miserable if I'm being honest, maybe some stuff had happened, so that's the end of the video, subscribe, follow my links and socials on board, Joseph, that will be linked down below. Anyway, don't forget to RBRG, follow my socials, and subscribe. Right. That's the end of the video, subscribe, follow my links and socials on board, Joseph, that will be linked down below. Anyway, don't forget to RBRG and subscribe, follow my socials, and bye-bye. Later, nerds. I'm not in mood for this, like at all. I'm not in mood, but we will power through. <clears throat>